The Asus Pad phone is back and the crazy tablet smartphone hybrid is so much more elegant this time around. But let's face it, the Pad phone's appeal is still fairly niche. Now, as we know, the Pad phone is essentially a smartphone bundled with a 10.1 inch docking station, which is nothing more than a bigger display and extra battery and front camera that gets all its power from the Pad phone 2 handset. But perhaps more importantly is the decision to scrap the flap and sideways docking for a new and improved docking mechanism. The circular Zen pattern on the plastic back doesn't scratch easily, and while the Pad Phone 2 might not be as striking as the HTC One, its clean lines look premium enough. We're also fans of the matte back of the Pad Phone station. And you can expect a bigger, higher res 4.7 inch 720p screen and quad core innards, while the pad station keeps its respectable 1280 by 800 HD screen. And while it's very watchable, it's not a patch on the best tablet screens we've seen. But more impressive is the handset's superb 720p display. It's crisp with vivid colours and brilliant viewing angles, plus a very bright Super IPS Plus outdoor mode too. Whether you're browsing or watching a movie, this is a serious step up from the original. The Pad Phone 2's Android 4.1 Jelly Bean OS hasn't been tweaked too much, but all additions are an improvement, like the notifications pull down and a redesigned time, date, and weather widget. And as you'd expect, apps, widgets, and wallpapers on the Pad Phone 2's home screens magically rearrange themselves when the phone is docked, and you'll find a pop up menu of floating apps in tablet mode too. Now, as a phone, the Pad Phone 2 eats up multitasking and browsing with games playing smoothly, but as impressive as Asus's dynamic display tech is, it still doesn't work beyond built-in apps like the brilliant Supernote. So if you're surfing via the built-in browser on the Pad Phone, for example, and want to switch to the station, the open page will appear on the tab. But if you're using Chrome, YouTube, or any other third-party apps, media players, and games, you have to relaunch. But switching between the two mid-movie is awesome, but stutters, outputting sound without picture and a reset means the operation is far from hassle-free. But the bonus of the pad station becomes clear when you stick the pad phone 2 into the station for a quick recharge. We lasted the day with heavy use, but it will easily stretch to two days with light use. 13 megapixel stills and 1080p video are on the cards and the Pad Phone 2 takes very good snaps, particularly outdoors and in well-lit conditions. And while the night mode does a great job of picking out whites in the dark, it often struggles to focus. And the Pad Phone station has to have its own one megapixel front-facing camera, but shares the rear snapper, which takes smooth and detailed footage for the most part, but suffers once you've zoomed in and can jump about if you're moving. It's got to be said, there is nothing quite like the pad phone. And while the two bundle is lightweight, it still takes up the same amount of space in your bag as two separate devices. But saying that, two 4G devices for the price of one contract is a pretty handy and affordable option. But saying that, you can bag yourself a Nexus 4 and an iPad for around the same price. So if you're going to take the pad phone plunge, Stuff.TV salutes you.